Hey everyone, DW Berman here. I've made a bunch of Lightwave tutorials, and uh, some are up for sale at liberty3d.com. Uh, I've not made one recently, but there have been some changes in Lightwave recently, uh, most notably the last two versions. Uh, one of the techniques I used to use was uh, a way to make your own cell shader or your own custom shader uh, using the node editor. Unfortunately, in Lightwave 2018, they changed the render engine so much that it broke that old technique. Now, uh, in Lightwave 2019, which has already been out for maybe half a year at this point, um, they had fixed that, and I just wanted to give this little update to kind of show the new process for doing the same old technique. But first, let's take a look at the scene. Uh, this is uh, one of the characters that comes with Lightwave, so it's content that you can download for free. I have two lights, two distant lights, just to kind of give us uh, this lighting. And if I switch to the camera view, you can see the camera angle of it. If I switch to VPR, you can see here's what we're looking at for a render. I have global illumination turned off. If I turn it back on, you can see it gets a lot brighter. I don't have it lit for this. Don't need it for this anyway. So turning that off. And now I'm just going to open up the, uh, the surface for this. First of all, I made a gradient, and this is what my gradient looks like. I just have, what is this, uh, one, two, three, four keys in here, and they are all set to uh, step for smoothing. Previously in Lightwave, the 2015 and before, well, whenever nodes were added through 2015, there was a way to uh, just add a Lambert shader and plug that into the input, and that way you get all of the lighting, uh, the shading, the Lambert shading, into the gradient, um, and that would control the thing. Like I said, in 2018, that stuff got taken away. However, in Lightwave 2019, it was added back in, but it's a little bit different of a workflow. First, what we need to do is we need to find our material components, which is right here. And you could uh, obviously type in there to search for it. And we have a bunch of shaders. So let's uh, use Lambert BRDF. Don't remember what the difference between these two are, but this one will work fine for what we need. You will notice, however, that I can't plug the output of this node into the input because it's the wrong type. So we need to convert the material into uh, uh, the shading that we could use into this. And to do that, we need this material integrator section, illumination. If I double click on that, it will add it to our scene or our graph. Now I can pipe the material out from there into the illumination material here. And this gives us three outputs. We have color, direct, and indirect. Direct is just the uh, lighting coming from the lights. Indirect is lighting coming from the um, global illumination or the radiosity, the reflected light, the bounced light. We're just going to use color. Color combines both of those. If I drop this in up here, you can see that's what it looks like. It's just the color. Now, of course, I could plug something into color here and, you know, whatever. I'm not going to do that. This I'm going to plug in to the input on the gradient. Now, when I plug the color out of the gradient into the color up here, you can see we have our banding that we set up. And to, I can double click on this and I can adjust these how I see fit. So, woohoo. Question is, why would I want to do this when I can just as easily uh, go to the render properties on the surface and uh, set the shading model to uh, cell or sublimation cell shader? Well, a couple of reasons. Um, and these are all just down to personal preference. Say, for instance, I wanted to uh, have something interesting go on with this one here. I can click on, oh, uh, what is it? I want to show input, show key inputs. That gives us a node input for the color, the position, and the alpha. One thing I can do is I could uh, type in turbulence and we'll just add a turbulence. And I can drop that, I'll go color out into position. And you can see, not so well, Let's crank that up a bit. Let's crank that down a bit. Let's change the scale of that. Now you can see we're getting something different here. 
Now that is crazy, that's all over the place. What's happening here is we have our background color and our foreground color, and it's using these as position data. And we really don't need it exactly like that. Let's say this key is at like 0.4498. Let's add a, a scalar node just so we have better control of that. And I can add in, drop that in there. Make this 0.44. But that's just our foreground color. Essentially what I'm doing with this is I'm trying to give that line a wiggle. Not a wiggle, a wave. Or just kind of disturb it somewhat. You see how it's all jaggedy now? That's what you can do in the node editor. You can dial in the look of this however you want. And I could also uh, go back into the node editor and uh, add another one here. And... Uh, what was I going to do? I was going to do the same thing. Show key inputs. Set the smoothing for that one, the step. But then this first one, I'll set it to linear, I guess. And now we get a soft edge between that. Actually, we have a hard edge and a soft edge. Sorry, a hard edge on the dark and a soft edge where it fades out from. But we could also add in some like add nodes here. And now let's do that. This is just the way I think sometimes. We'll add in a little bit of math, scalar, add, since it is already going to that. We will uh, pipe that into position, and this should be a bit smaller. Oh, I, what am I doing? What's going on? <laughs> Let's click up here on this little probe and see what's happening. 0.52, maybe it's looping over, so let's subtract a little bit. I know we added an add noise, we'll subtract. Okay, so now when I change the scalar on this, it'll uh, change both of the ins and the outs, both the, sorry, what's happening is I have one of these here, like this going into key position two, which is our key here. And then this other one, it's going pipe through here and it's subtracting it. So it's making sure that this moves up the same amount as this moves. So, wow, that's poorly expressed. Anyway, long story short, you can get lots of options. And because we also have the color input, we can do some other interesting things. Like, let me drag these two nodes down in here. I will drag this not exactly what I wanted to do or was it let's get rid of the second key and set this back to step okay so I should have a dark key and a light key should have planned this part out better. I don't want to go into position, I want to go into color. There we go, there's my problem. Now let's go to this previous one here and we will share this one as well. And uh, let's, yeah, we'll do this one. That'll be the bright one. And then we come down to this other one. What these are, these are just, uh, uh, grid nodes, grid 2D, and they're just squeezed so that there's just a thin line and it's rotated on 45 degrees in order to give us kind of a cross-hatching thing. And I have this grid going to this one and I have them opposing sides. So you can have a great deal of um, of control over the shaders that you want to do. <laughs> 20 meters, no millimeters uh, by using the this technique so anyway this is not the greatest example and it's a bit more long-winded than i expected it to be but i hope you find this interesting and useful in the uh 
going through the tutorials I had previously made and just in, in general in using Lightwave. So uh, thanks. Hope you had a great time with this. And uh, yeah, until next time.